Welcome to What's in the Box, Episodes of Horror with Donna and Eric. I'm Donna. And I'm Eric. And uh, we're still on our werewolf kick. Um, I'm really enjoying um, diving into the world of werewolves, movies, and books. Um, So I don't know. It's certainly a genre or trope, I guess you'd call it, that you don't really see a lot of new books coming out about werewolves at least i i don't they're never in the cycle right you get the vampire cycle the zombie cycle yeah you know apocalyptic nightmare disease cycle kind of stuff maybe or end of the world kind of stuff but you never see the werewolf cycle unless it's tying in you know werewolves always make that apparent you know in van helsing you know i would consider that one a, a a vampire movie but there was a werewolf in it um underworld you know even oh, though yeah. that's a versus it still leaned heavily towards the vampires vampires the yeah for sure part. um yeah and there's no you know, i trying to think are there any like uh teen um twilight-esque i mean there's werewolves in twilight but it's always paired with the vampire it's always as the opponent you know and it's, it's always heavy on the vampire because twilight was more about the vampires oh definitely definitely yeah so um yeah, you're totally right. There is a, uh, and it's just weird. It's weird how everybody seems to like werewolves and their movies and all that stuff, but nobody ever, and it's never anything that everybody decides they have. You know, like there'd be a phase on on mermaids and mm. and young adult and and you know, writing clicks and all that stuff, but it's never werewolves. Yeah. So this episode is going to be a little bit different um, because we do have. Two books we're going to talk about. Um, the first one is The Last Werewolf by Glenn Duck- Duncan. Yeah, and I hate uh, to say it, say it, it, you know. Yeah. We're doing this because this book's terrible. <laughs> yeah, it, it was really bad. And I do not DNF books. Um, I have read in the last two years, I have read over 400 books and I have DNF two. This makes the third. Um, So I'm not someone who regularly DNFs books. It had to have been really bad for me to to stop reading it. I'll be honest. I thought you were going to keep us going on it. I thought you were going to be like, no, I'm going to power through it. And I was like, oh, I really don't want to do that. So I I hope I was – if you want to blame me for your DNF, I'll take this. I just could not fathom yeah wasting time reading this and it may be spectacular and book two and three maybe i mean that's what blows my mind this is a trilogy yeah it may be better and i was so excited when i got this book you know because it's a werewolf book like you said they don't have that many and then i just i read the first chapter and i thought oh this is i mean this has just been a mistake i I can't do this so yeah i powered through i got to page 128 um and it was it was just horrible. The writing just slogged you down, and you just were like. And I think when we had texted about it, uh, I had said, "Oh no, I started it. I'll keep reading it because I don't DNF books as a regular practice." I wanted to power through it, and I wanted to get it, but you gave me an out, and okay. I was like, "Okay, yeah. okay, I don't have to read this horrible book." <laughs> yeah, and, and I know that I think there's I've looked at some of the reviews. There's two there's there's two camps here. It's either really, really good or it's the worst thing you've ever read. And nobody's really in the middle. So people that found this entertaining, you know, God bless them. And mm-hmm. then there's the rest of us. And so I just I was shocked. I was shocked. And you know what? And one of the reviews was really I thought hit the nail on the head. It was basically like this isn't um a, a negative review on the author or the story or any of that. This is a, this is an attack on, on traditional publishing and the people that are tone deaf to what might be considered a good, you know, it's like they, yeah. they, they were like, this is who read this and said yes to this and all the stuff that gets passed on normal, you know, day. Yeah. And people, you know, you go, look, I, I would, I can think of a thousand things I'd rather have done than read this book. So I'm shocked that somebody thought that this was clever. Yeah, and and like I had said, and you said, there's two more books after this. Yeah, like, I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> so, and you know what? And um, yeah, I, I'm 
first to step up and say, Hey, maybe I'm just not smart enough to get it. Yeah. But, um, I know when something isn't fun to read and this isn't fun to read. And, no, and the whole time I, I remember I sent you the, the message. I was like, it feels like the guy, the bully from Goodwill hunting wrote a book, the guy yeah. that, how you like them apples, that guy. I mm -hmm. felt like this is his, him pretending to be, you know, that I don't even know the word. He's just very pretentious. It comes across as like, you know, somebody got a hold of a, of a thesaurus and a, yep. a big word of the day calendar and decided yeah. that all the was going to be jammed in. And I don't know if it cleans up. It might clean up later. The other problem is it's in the first person. So when you're real, when you're like that, and then it's in first person, so you can't get out of the headspace. If the character was doing that when he spoke, but we had a third person narrative, then you get a break. Yeah. But this was just piling on, and it was it was you needed a machete, and a and and a hundred percent of your attention on every single word to try and figure out what this guy was trying to get to, and, yeah. and cut through all him. You know, all he's a look. I'm so witty and I'm so smart, and I'm and it just loses the audience. And then you're like, why would I want to read this? Yeah, so. I mean, there were some things that I was like, oh, that's making me want to continue to read because there are some questions I want answered, and I hope that they're answered during the book. But I wasn't that interested in the answers to continue. Yeah. Um, it just. It started off as a story, but then it kind of got to feeling like a journal. And then there was actual parts that were a journal where he was writing. But then after the journal part, it still felt like a journal, but it wasn't because he yeah. ended up. Um, so basically what he's doing from what I, I had read is uh, he had written journals about his life. And they were in like a secure location. So when he finds out that he's the last and someone's going to come and kill him, he goes to the secluded property that he has to finish the final journal. And and he basically is telling about his um, his wife and what happened to his wife back in the 1800s when he was turned or whatever era it was. Yeah, and the whole time though, there's a there's a like a government program hunting them down or something yeah because like, that's yeah. some sort of group so so it's not like it's it, it has a potential to be really cool highlander werewolf yeah vibes but it's not it's i guess it's almost more like underworld yeah where they're one side's hunting the other side down but they are human doing it so i mean right. yeah so you get the idea but i was like Ugh. i yeah, mean I it just, got no nah, yeah. I, yeah, I, 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 I want to get in here and say hey i'm sure there's something there you may like it people may like it that's great mm -hmm. We can't do it, so we pivoted. Yeah, and what we went to was the Howling Two, and I actually have um, this cover, but mine has the the holographic letters. Oh yeah, so does mine. Yeah, so at least the copy I read. I have two copies of this for some reason. Yeah, I don't know if the other one's right or not. Um, so yeah, this is pretty cool. I gotta say, I think this was better than the first one. At least to me, it was more action. It was kind of like yeah, cat and, a cat and mouse game because they were like chasing her. Um, I I really like this one way better than the first. I love the first book, but the second book I think was better. My problem right now is that the movie because we watched the movie right after we read the book, and so in my head. I have the images of both kind of, and so I'm sitting here trying to think, did I really like two better than one? Or am I thinking I liked it better than the movie or less than the movie? But I agree with you. It's a really good book. Yeah. Um, it is, of course, way, way, way different than the movie, which we'll be watching the movie for a later episode. Um, we'll go into that. So um, I actually posted on Instagram um, and somebody that follows me on there didn't know there were books to the movies and i said yes there are and they're fabulous but they are nothing like the movies i so, think what we said when we did the talk about the movie was the fifth howling is closest to the first book yeah and everything else is just kind of out there yeah so um so we got two returning we have uh well we have four returning characters, Current characters yeah um from the first book which uh, two of them we expected because they're the ones that that you know, drove out of 
what was the name of the town? Drago, Drago. Drago, yeah. And then, of course, when they drove out, they heard the howling. So they thought, well, somebody escaped, but they didn't yep. know that it was her husband and his, you know, and that's the one, I think that was the thing that bothered me through this book the most was the characterization of the female wolf lady. Um, I can't, what's her name? Marsha. Marsha, is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think I remember us talking about it in the first book that she's very, she's the alpha of the village. Now she's not in the movie, not really, but in the book she was, right? No, nope, vice versa. Guy. Vice wanted... versa. In the movie, she was alpha. In the book, she was not really. If she was, it was very understated. Okay. Yeah, because I'm just saying, because in this book, she's the alpha. Yeah, I mean, she's she the alpha. Not only just the, I mean, to the point where she is like radiating uh, onto um, humans. You know, like yeah. if he, she wants something done, she, just her presence is enough to make them do what she wants um yeah and that was all fine too i guess the thing that was getting me it was i guess it was the thing that i thought was funny is i i found it a bit tedious her constant um uh the way she was upset with karen you know she was playing the victim in the book the whole time that she was destroying this girl's life yeah i found that a little tiresome but at the same time i thought it was it was well written and, and you could tell that it was wearing on roy yeah which i th i thought in the end ended up making it you know the arc worthwhile but i kept thinking you know she would always say that karen ruined our lives you know damaged me but i, I just kept thinking in the book the first one she's the one that changes roy she she basically mm -hmm. seduces roy and uh, ruins karen and his marriage yeah you know? <laughs> and then um and then she blames karen for being upset at it about it and shooting her you know in the head yeah uh, as a werewolf while she's trying to eat karen so and and she killed her friend and all the other things i thought that was funny i also thought it was funny that they completely ignored the fact or the reason why karen and her husband moved to that town you know they right. act like it was because you know, she at one point says to roy something like you know, she had mistreated you and she was frigid towards you. And I, you know, I was there for you. And I'm like, and we're forgetting that she's survived this horrific rape. And that's why she was, it was the same yeah. problem we had with the first book. Yeah. Was we didn't understand the reaction to the, the partner. You know, one wanted to have sex and the other one was having issues. Well, you know, it's like, it didn't make any sense the way it was written, but this, this is very action packed. Yeah, And I liked how they jumped around and kind of flowed with it. At no point were you bored with this book. Nope, not at all. Um, the only thing that I was thinking, or not the only thing, but one of the things I was thinking as I was reading it is, why in the 70s when they wrote books, like horror books, the husband is always some kind of, like, asshole. Like, her husband, David, you know, because she gets remarried because she assumes Roy's dead. He's always like ma putting her down and, and like, oh, you need oh, to take some it. more medication and you need to go see the doctor. And see, but I, I feel like he, <laughs> I feel like out of all of them, there's two people I felt the worst for. It was the him and Ashley. And the, yeah. And, and I know, in, in, I guess in today's society, we would easily say, yeah, like he's not being very supportive, but just, yeah. I don't know. I mean, he married this lady who tells him that my last husband was turned into a werewolf mm. and that all these werewolves are chasing, you know what I mean? And she told him all that stuff and he marries her. Anyway, she yeah. starts freaking out about werewolves. And I, I wonder if our reaction wouldn't have been like, are you on your medicine? Have you been? Yeah, true. Her? I you just got, it? uh, I just got, um, uh, flashbacks of the husband and rosemary's baby <laughs> right right you know? right and so and, and it, well, totally he, that guy was a jerk because he was selling his wife to the devil yeah to be that but this poor guy who's coming off of uh, his wife dying didn't she die of cancer cancer yep he has a five-year-old kid or six-year-old kid who's enamored with karen who must have been three at the time because they were right. married yeah, they've been or married maybe, for three years. Yeah. Yeah. So he so the mom dies at three, then they get remarried. Um, I think they've been married for like two years at the point yeah. of the story. So 
so you got this young kid and he just lets her go. That's what I didn't get. He just lets her, she just leaves. She leaves the yeah. husband and, and son behind. And he's, After, uh, she's also much younger than him too. Yeah. And I think that's part of the reason why he probably comes across as kind of an a-hole is because he's much older. Yeah. And he's not dealing with this. Uh, he felt like he was kind of like, I am here and I'm not going to jump either direction, you know? And so I get, yeah, I totally get, I think our sensibilities of this, of this time period makes him seem worse than he might be. I yeah. actually thought, I thought Karen was terrible for leaving. I understood why she left. Yeah. But I mean, that little boy just lost one of the two mother figures he has left. Yeah. And she just abandons him. And then, so not only does she abandon the husband and the kid, but now the person that used to take care of him has been murdered. So they have to deal with that as well. And she just leaves it all behind. So yeah. I thought that, and I get why, cause I mean, it's a, you know, you're like, well, I'm being attacked by werewolves. So, but you know, it's just one of those weird things. I, I can't imagine telling anybody that you're having werewolf issues that anybody would be on board to help you. Yeah. So, but yeah. yeah, no, I felt bad for him. But at the same time, you know, he, he had to get him out of the way. Now, if I was writing this, I would have killed him and the kid. I would have yeah. had this book end with him finding that out. Because th to me, that the whole point was to punish Karen. Mm -hmm. So would you not punish her by getting rid of everything? Every place she went, I would have killed everybody. Yep. If I was the, the werewolf trying to do yeah. this thing. Yeah, so. the parents and... Yeah, it didn't make know. any sense. She was, for as... as uh, as hellbent as that lady was to to kill Karen and make her suffer, mm -hmm. I thought it was odd some of the choices they made, you know. Yeah, and I kind of felt bad for Roy because he kept, like, striking out. He was sent to kill the kid, and he ended up killing the housekeeper. He was sent to kill Karen, but he ended up killing that couple um, instead of it being Roy and or Chris yeah, and, and Karen. It was the the housekeeper and the the young man that worked at the, the resort, so... Kind of felt bad for him because, of course, Marsha gave him shit for it. She's like, yeah. you failure, you know? Yeah, I thought that was and, – and, and that's, you know, hammers home her being the alpha and being – but you also get to see a little bit of his humanity that's still there. Coming through, that, yeah. Yeah, and so it, it almost redeems his character because by the end of the first book, I mean, he's just, you know, he's just awful. That's yeah. Not, all the stuff that he did and, and put Karen through – Um the way he handled everything was just terrible. And yeah. so now we get to see him kind of redeem himself before, you know, and sacrifice himself at the end. Um, I also thought that was funny too. Uh, Marsha kept saying, she's here with uh, your best friend. These two have betrayed you. Your best friend and your wife are, you know, making it sound like they, I was like, the whole premise of the first book is that she seduces Roy away from the wife. And now she's yeah. acting like these two, like, like they still have claim on people, which I thought was fun. That felt like seventies. Yeah. Um, thinking. Um, the only problem I had with the, the writing was um, every time he tried to have Marsha or whatever her name is show up, they, he always had to say black hair streak of silver. Mm -hmm. every single time like all of a sudden like it felt like it was in a movie where it would be like a, a quick cut scene and then that music that dramatic music da -da, playing every time he wrote about her i mean even when it was just her silhouette in the doorway you could still tell that she had black hair and a streak <laughs> of silver and yeah i thought he's 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 really hammering this one home uh and i found that a little irritating but you know nothing that's it that's my only complaint yeah. i found three um typos or you know mistakes editor that slipped by the editor which i mm -hmm. thought was comforting you know because we always yeah. say that some you know even the big boys you know the ones that have all the editors and the major publishing houses they still have mistakes yeah so it's nice yeah. to who see who was this published by faucet faucet yeah books. it's got to be a yeah, yeah faucet faucet yeah so yeah well, one time they called uh her senior instead of senorita yeah and then there was just a couple just spacing issues you know real easy typecast kind of problems but it's just like it's mm -hmm. just you know just for everyone out there that's writing that yes edit 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 but even the big boys mess up so yep 
don't don't let it uh, slow you down. Yeah. It Overall, this book is fun. I yeah. don't. You know what? I I think my biggest problem is, is I don't like any of these characters. No. I, I didn't really. I don't feel bad for Karen. I didn't feel. You know, I don't like Chris very much. I mean, he just kind of. I don't know. I guess I feel kind of bad for Chris, but at the end of that book, she's sitting here thinking, what am I going to do? Am I supposed to do something with Chris or go back to my husband and kid? Yeah. You go back to your husband and your kid. What that doesn't even make sense. Yeah. You didn't go to Chris to have an affair. You went to him to kill a werewolf. Yeah. So I, I felt bad for Audrey. Yeah. Like she, she did act juvenile, but I guess she was supposed to be much younger than yeah, Chris. She's like 22 well. or something. Yeah. She's, yeah. And he's, so she's a kid. And, you know, he's in his thirties. I, I was pissed off when Karen was like, Oh, I'm hit, almost hitting 30. Cause she's like 28 in this book. And she made mention of how she was getting old. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> the lines, they kept talking about like the lines and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I did feel bad for Audrey because he was kind of like, he was kind of an asshole to her. Like, I guess that's, he's a bachelor and you know, maybe she was hoping he would be the one and put a ring on her finger, but she was like a, a model, I guess. A model or an actor. Oh, she was model. an actress that was no good. So she was always in the background. So yeah. She was like pretty, but not talented. Yeah. And so, so, so yeah, yeah, definitely. It did feel like she was, and she definitely, and she upped her game. You know, when, uh, when, uh, Karen showed up, so she, you know, she decided that she did want to, you know, take over. Yeah. Yeah. But then when um, uh, Chris had said to her, you know what? Why don't you just leave? You know, just just leave. I don't know. Yeah, like... And then she immediately is like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I want to be here. I want to be with you. Yeah, yeah. I felt bad for her, too. I, yeah. I really did feel bad for her because she was in a situation, no win situation. And then mm -hmm. in the end, because they didn't. They couldn't tell her the truth because who would believe it? She doesn't know that what she's doing. She thinks she's just getting rid of a rival. She doesn't understand that she's sending everyone to their death. Right. And uh, I did think, and and then that's where we get that feeling of Marsha having some sort some of kind of power, yeah, over her because it wasn't just you know i mean it was sexual in nature but i think she was just using that as her way to mm -hmm. overcome that girl's senses and stuff but it was very um yeah it just came across where she was 10 times more powerful in this than she was in the first one but i did kind of get the feeling in the first one that she she was supposed to be kind of mystical and have like and you know. very and very um embracing the the lifestyle I guess. Yeah. And then you got that in the movie. That's one of the things the movie and the book had in common is that she wanted them to be more uh, embracing the beast. Yeah. And less, you know, people surviving in this, with this situation. So, yeah, I was, uh, I thought it was a fun read. I do. And I'm disappointed that I, that the, the movie's not going to follow this storyline. But yeah. at the same time, I'm also curious because I know the second one, I haven't seen it in forever. But I know same. the second one is is um, cult classic, yeah. so I'm sure we're going to enjoy it. It's going to be fun and campy, and I know yeah. they got Christopher Lee in it, and I love Christopher Lee, so that'll yeah. be fun to do. But I just – overall, the book itself is is really good, and it's a really good end of the whole Karen story, supposedly. But then we know there's a third book, so right. now I'm really intrigued as to what the third mm -hmm. book's about. So we'll have yeah. to throw that in our list. And I, I think maybe we'll finish our werewolf cycle with ha Howling 3 and yeah. see where it goes. Yeah, I was kind of bummed there wasn't more of the deformed Marsha werewolf. Yeah. Yeah, because that would have been, that would added to it. And, and, yeah. and I'd like to see her attacking her using, instead of, and I guess maybe that's why her human side was such, you know, so bitchy and, and aggressive was because when she turned into the wolf, she was so no longer the dominant one yeah so that felt, but it, it also made you feel like and maybe that's why roy was able to break away from her hold at the end was because she didn't dominate both the wolf and the man side of him because she wasn't around when he was the yeah wolf. and you know and yeah because when uh chris and roy are fighting at that final scene it, it almost seemed a little bit like roy was like you know what i'm done Oh, yeah, definitely. He gave himself up. He pulled his, his weight off of uh, Chris so Chris could get the knife. Yep. And, then, and then as soon as Chris grabbed the knife, he comes back down, 
Chris stabs him and that's the end of it. And, uh, and it says something about the look in his eye being of relief and all that stuff. So yeah. You know, and he put his head down on Chris's leg or something like that. Yeah. Almost like, you know, when you, if you like, he put his dog to sleep. And his dog yeah. Laid down. Now, earlier in the book, Roy does mention to her that he's still coming to terms with the animal side. Right. And he wasn't enjoying the killing. And then he kills three people on accident. And then she's like, oh, well, you know, that wasn't really an accident. But yeah, I mean, you're a werewolf. So at that time you're going to be caught up in the bloodlust but he hadn't gone out to kill those people yeah so i think that i think i think that he, and maybe that's what three is about maybe the three shows us more of a human element to the werewolves i don't know but yeah um i I, I i enjoyed it i thought it was yeah. really good and i liked the the character of, of luis zarate so, yeah. Zorati. Yeah, he Zorati. was interesting. He was a fun character. And it was funny because I've reading it and I read his name and it made me think of Jose Luis Zarate, who is an author who wrote um The Root of Ice and Salt, a vamp uh, Dracula, uh, a take on a Dracula book. And I'm like, huh, I wonder if um he kind of like named his character that after that author, because that book was written Back in the 80s? Or so, probably not. Well, maybe. He could have known it before he, re he released that one book. Yeah, true. Of, of course, you know, it's not like today where everybody seems to know everybody within the subgenres and everything. But Yeah. Um, one little tidbit. Um, I just was Googling um, the second movie because I couldn't really remember anything about it except for the blonde lady with the big... She had big blonde hair. Um, so I Googled something and I found this blog entry by, I don't even know who it was because it was just a username. The username was like Marlo something. Um, so it was on this like blog. And that guy was going off on Gary Bradner. And it was right after Gary Bradner died. And he was like, F that guy. I'm not sad that he died. If anybody deserved to die, it was him. And going on about how much of a racist that Gary Bradner was and things like that. And I just read this whole like blog entry and I was like, oh, hmm. he really did not like Gary Bradner. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I haven't heard anything about him one way or yeah. the other. So. Yeah, I mean, I really didn't even know who wrote The Howling until we read the first book. Right. I, I was like, I don't, I've never heard that name before because I, I don't really, I think he wrote something else, but I, I was really, say, I don't think I've seen any other books other than The Howling, but I've never yeah. done a deep dive into the guy. So, yeah. and then, guess, you know what? And if he, if all that's true and the guy's a bad guy, he's a guy's a bad guy. Yeah. We can separate the two. We yeah. should, there was a time we could, you know, yeah. where you could read something and, and go back and, and not appreciate the guy, but appreciate the, the book or whatever so yeah but i i like you said i really enjoyed this book for me it was kind of like a heart pumping like reading it because you know she's getting chased by these werewolves and she goes to la and you know they're gonna show up and then she goes to mexico and you know they're gonna show up there were um, a few times where i wish the editor would have done something a little different but you know structurally but you're right they they kept the pedal down they could have yeah. had a couple times where they gave us some good jump scares I have one question for you, though. When he's looking for the silver knife and he comes out of the jeweler and the jeweler says no, and he goes to get in the car and the guy's like, I can't help you anymore, and he leaves. Later, that jeweler hunts him down and gives him a, an address to go to. Now, Marcia said later to Roy that she had... Um, Arranged for him to be detained. Yeah, yeah delayed or whatever. Was the delay sending him to get the knife from someone else, or is it telling the guy to leave? Was that the only th – I was trying to figure that out because it wasn't until the old lady, gypsy lady, or disguised lady went into the jewelry store before the jewelry guy came and gave him the note. So yeah. I didn't know if that was supposed to be her in disguise or if that was uh, – the taxi was the only delay, and then this was just something separate. Yeah, I think the lady that went into the store was just another gypsy because you remember Marsha saying at the beginning um, when they were in yeah. that gypsy camp that they have the eyes gypsies everywhere. on uh, yeah. eyes everywhere. Um, so I think the only 
thing that she arranged for him to be detained was or delayed was the taxis. Okay. Um, Which I and, thought made sense, but then all yeah. of a sudden she's giving a note, and I thought, well, maybe, maybe she thought that nobody would be able to help. But then I thought, well, maybe the guy actually stepped. Maybe the silver workers decide, or the uh, jeweler decided, screw it, we're going to go against the werewolves, which seems yeah. Like yeah, because you notice too, because uh, uh, it was mentioned that there was nobody on the streets. Yeah. When he came out of the jewelry shop, there was like no taxis, no, you know, no, no, no other cars. Um, and then he ended up walking and then finding some random taxi or whatever. Yeah, you know, it makes sense to me, though, and which I don't understand why they wouldn't have done it that way, but to make. She should have just had the gypsies kill him. Mm. And then he's dead in the street. And then somebody thinks it's just a normal crime, knife or whatever. And then they kill her. But, um, you know, whatever. But that she was her. using that as a like a dangling in front of Roy yeah. saying, he's sleeping yeah. with your wife. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And you notice yeah. at the end, she was going to be the one to take care of Karen. I thought that was, I got why she wanted to do it. Because she's she wanted to, you know, take away her beauty and her vitality by torturing her to death that way mm -hmm. but, and obviously she couldn't turn like you said we could we weren't going to see but wouldn't that have been cooler though if she would have turned into the werewolf monster yeah. deformed thing and then killed her that way yeah i was like with those um what the heck were they the pl not pliers the, the clamps yeah. or the the yeah. whatever that she heated in the in the fire and i was like oh my god no because i could just imagine that what that looked like it could yeah, just peeling pieces off of you. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. oh no, no, <laughs> like poor Karen. <laughs> but uh, so so we don't know for sure. We were told the Roy dies, stabbed, and he goes down. So we know that for sure. He probably changes back to a man. But we only know that she's in the room with the fire, the other werewolf, uh, Marsha. So maybe Marsha escapes. Maybe she's part of the third book. Maybe. But then I'm, he I'm may, that'd be funny though. If she comes yeah. out and then her human form's all deformed. <laughs> of course, didn't we decide? Didn't they? Didn't, yeah, they heal. So, I mean, I guess the silver is the reason why she couldn't heal as a werewolf. But as a human, she did. Yeah. So, I guess even if she was burned, she should heal from that. It's and it, Yeah, and it took her months to heal from that anyways, the bullet. Which makes sense because it's silver and it's supposed yeah. to have killed her. So, I assume it must have just skimmed instead of gone in. Yeah. And uh, and that's probably the bullet they found that was in the pocket that Chris carried around was probably that bullet. Yeah. Because the other ones would have been launched into the people, so right. the werewolves. Um, I find it hard to believe that it would be that difficult to find a gun in Mexico. Mm. Maybe, but I just think there's a criminal element that you could, if you were, the gypsies would be the ones I would probably have approached if I was trying to. Yeah. So maybe that's why they didn't even think about going for the gun, but um, that I would have thought that for sure. And then um, I don't know. Would you have stuck around, or would you have left as soon as you, as soon as those two kids killed were killed, and you knew they were in town because they already knew they were in town. That's why she wasn't in her bungalow, and those kids were taking advantage of it, the youth. Uh, and then they get murdered while they're having sex. But I almost feel like they. They should have gone somewhere else where they would have been have access to silver bullets and a gun, and maybe a more defensible position. Than just yeah, with a third person. I mean, yeah, that totally makes sense. And you're right. Maybe it would have made sense to go back to California where Chris could get some more silver bullets, um, knowing that they would just follow you there anyways. Um, but I don't think it would have made a good story. Yeah, probably not. And then, and like I said, it was a good story. It was yeah. interesting. And we have to see how this rolls into three. He may have already had three plotted out. So he may have already known what we don't know, what's going to yeah. happen next. So um, I do wish this was, I do wish the movie followed this book though. It would be, this mm. would be a fun movie. Could you imagine what they could have done with the deformed Marsha in the yeah. movie? Yeah. That especially would have been... today. Today. Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh, you know what? I bet you it would look like something like in Fright Night, you know, when he's the wolf and he gets stabbed. Oh, right, yeah. And yeah. it kind of turns into that thing. I bet yeah. you it would be something like that, which would look really cool on film. Yeah, um, yeah so A+, plus, especially, you know, when we're coming off the other one. I, yeah. I 
had you know not i didn't delay you know i was reading this and enjoying it wanting to mm -hmm. see what happened next so um, yeah yeah i think you're right i think the second book was a little more it was I think more it was intense better. Yeah, it was definitely more intense. I just, and I think it, I think it flowed a little better because yeah. I, I think they, with I think cutting down the number of werewolves and situations, mm -hmm. even though they really just focused on the two in the first book, um, you know, it just added to it. It upped this the the ante. Yeah, I like the one scene that I really liked, and I think up the creep factor in this book was the scene after Roy killed the cow and he took the cow heart mm -hmm. and. There was just that scene where Marsha put her hand out for the heart and then pulled it back into the, the trailer. Yeah, and she's all this deformed and creepy yeah. and yeah. And the poor uh gypsy people that have to sit there and listen to them howl and all that stuff and then lie to the yeah. cops. So yeah, I thought uh yeah, I think he did it was a good job. I was yeah. I enjoyed it. I'm I'm ready for the next one when mm -hmm. we get to it. So uh yeah, so we have we a bunch more. of different. Yeah, we have a bunch of different covers of. So we've shown the two of this. We you know we yep. both had the gold, and this is the red. And yeah. I think it's a very class classic cover. You know, using yeah. something to make the two. I mean, I know he put it on the cover too, but I like how he has the two fangs coming out. Yeah. And then there's this one, which I do not like. I hate that <laughs> all three of them have these. <laughs> yeah. Paintings or whatever. I don't know what. They yeah. Are. I yeah, these know. are the the newer covers. I already have Howling Three, and I got a vintage copy of Howling Three, yeah, as well. So I've been sitting on them for a long time. I've read yeah. the first one a couple of times, but yeah. I hadn't read two or three yet. So yeah. that's another fun thing about this project: it's getting actually making you know the TBR pile go down a little bit. Yeah, these look like Chewbacca to me. Yeah, a very sad, which I guess is supposed to be Marsha. Yeah, and then. And then the other one's lighter in color, which would be John. No, oh, Roy. Roy, yeah. Was he John they, in the movie? Oh, let's not get off on that. Tangent. Yeah. Anyways, I'm thinking John, but yeah, Roy and Marsha. So. Yeah, this kind of actually looks like the Karen werewolf from the first movie. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, so well, of course we know that. We know that the second movie can't be anything like the first movie or like the book because Karen is dead in the first movie. Yeah. yeah. So we are not given anything. Yeah, but this is a bad cover. I don't know who made this decision, but it was not a good one. Um, this is kind of a cool cover. Yeah, I was wondering if it was maybe European or... Maybe. Or maybe it's uh, somebody like the movie or something. I don't know. But yeah, it's a cool cover. Yeah. And then this one's kind of cool. Yeah, um, I'm not sure. If it's the same as Howling 2, I assumed Return of the Howling meant it was Howling 2. Yeah. I liked I liked that they put the creature on there, and mm. so I figured I'd throw it in there because there's not a lot of covers to choose from. It's not like the other books when we have like 10 or 15. Yeah, and, and I think this was cool ones. Yeah, I think this was the last one, right? Yeah, and this is probably like maybe the hardcover edition, mm. and it might be like in the UK or something because sometimes they'll change titles. The titles, yeah. Um, but I think, I think, I think this one's... The classic is my favorite. I mean, especially with the holographic. The one that I have is we have is the holographic sure. title. So I wish my cover was in a little bit better shape, but because it's kind of like faded. But yeah. I mean, what do you expect? It's yeah. from 78. 78, so. yeah. Yeah. And so we got the the fact that they even survived, really, you know. Yeah. It cracks me up. I look right on the inside first page the howling dollar 75 the howling too a dollar 95 <laughs> yeah that is crazy people, like, and, but you know people are like oh, i can't believe books are two bucks yeah right <laughs> and now it's like i'm dropping nothing but you know yeah. nothing will stop me from dropping 20 bucks uh, 20 dollars on a book <laughs> yeah especially because this is almost 300 pages it's a good read yeah, but it it really flows well. So yep. I uh, the, like there's just a couple times when I know he was trying to be dramatic, but it's like you've already introduced Marsha. We already know she exists as the villain, and he kept trying to make it be like like when they when they fight him. Oh, that's the other thing. How easy is it for a dead guy and Marsha to get 
passports to fly into Mexico. It's 1979. Thought, did they even need passports oh, yeah, back yeah, then? Who knows? Yeah, maybe that's why it was so easy. My first thought was, how did he get a passport? I mean, he doesn't. He's dead. Yeah. He's. They've officially because I mean they talk about her dead husband. Yeah. So then I'm like, you know, like you didn't did. even. I didn't even think you needed ID. Yeah, I know, like, right? You're, you're probably just like, right. Hey, I need a, a plane ticket to London. Like, my I name remember, is Jane Doe. <laughs> yeah, I remember how easy it used to be to get it. You know, when I think about it, walk through the airport and stuff. But yeah, I I would still think you would need a passport or some sort of identification. But I guess they also they work with the gypsies, and I'm sure the gypsies can come up with yep. fake papers. We if we learned anything from Peaky Blinders, we know that the gypsies. Yeah, <laughs> full of fake paperwork. So yeah, um, yeah. No, I, overall, I'm like, I'm cool. I thought it was great, and I think maybe it was even more entertaining because I he suffered through the other one. Yeah, you know, I got to chapter three, three, and I think I was halfway through three when you sent me the message back saying that yeah, maybe we should. Yeah, I'm okay, if we don't finish. And I was thinking, oh, thank goodness, because I, I just cannot <laughs> do this. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. Um, I'm surprised I got to 127, no, 128, I think that's whatever. <laughs> and like I said, I read other people who love it. And so if you love that book, you know, good for you. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it, but I could not fight through it. So Yeah, I couldn't either. And there's yeah. not enough time in the you know in the day for me to to waste on on stuff that I can't enjoy. There's so yeah. many things I want to get to read that you know when I get to this point I'm like ah oh, I just cannot suffer this. And plus we got scares coming up and so you know I'm like we just didn't have the time. I didn't have any yeah. extra time to spare this time. So nope. but I'm excited we're going to read something we've never even heard of for the next one. Um, yep. And then we're probably going to do maybe one or two more and then we'll get the howling three and then we'll morph into a different genre so if you have enjoyed the um the werewolf stuff we're still going and yeah. if you haven't the end is near so either way i think we'll be getting there for you so we're gonna do some uh classic deep dives mm -hmm. so we're gonna try and get back into some other stuff so uh, people that like the uh the 70s supernatural we're gonna go into books you know a little older than that and and see what we got yeah All right, now it is time for our Not Stephen King Book of the Week. Um, and we have Old Hollow um, by Jeremy McGargy. Um, he will actually be at Scares at Care Author Con. Um, he's Wait. a West Virginia author. I actually purchased this at Scares last year from him. Um, this is a werewolf book that's not your typical type of werewolf book. Um, there's this guy, Asher. He lives in the, the mountains um, in a mountain town called Old Hollow, a small town. But he lives up in the mountains by himself in this cabin. He kind of lives off grid, um, living off the land, things like that. Um, and he ends up going to town to return his library books. And he sees like nobody's around. And come to find out this group of werewolves have come into the town and um, just started decimating the population. They blocked the only road out of the town so people couldn't get out. Um, and they were just going through and killing. And they took up residence in the um, town junkyard and built this huge uh, pile of bodies that they were gnawing on. Um, I think there's like five werewolves. Um, and it's a really interesting concept because the leader of the werewolves is this ancient werewolf. He supposedly was be around back in um, the Viking times. And it kind of explains missing uh, cities or towns. Like, these people are blamed for Roanoke. Yeah, um, that sounds yeah. interesting. Yeah, it's really fascinating. Um, so Asher, this guy who lives in the mountains, he ends up finding these... Um, uh, this woman and her daughter, um, and then they go to the library and they meet up with the librarian and the janitor of the library. So they're like this small ragtag group of, of survivors. Um, and uh, they're trying to, you know, defeat these werewolves. They end up meeting this one werewolf who 
was a young kid who was turned um, and he doesn't really want to be a werewolf. So he kind of tries to start helping the survivors. Um, and as you can imagine, that doesn't go well for him. I was mad at Jeremy. I messaged him <laughs> and said, how could you do that? Um, but this book has one of the most unique werewolf kills I have ever read in my life. And I'm not even going to give you any clues about it because I don't want to ruin it. But when I read it, I was like, holy shit, you know what? That could totally work. Cool. It was there something, you you, yeah, you would never in a million years even see that even being a possibility of any kind of way to kill a werewolf. But it totally could be plausible if werewolves were real. You could do this and it would totally work. Very cool. So, yeah. But yeah, it's definitely worth a, a, a read. Old Hollow by Jeremy McGargy. We'll have the link below so you guys can uh, just click on it and go check it out. Yeah, and it's not very long. It's, it's only about, let's see, about 150 pages. So it's a nice novella, novella good. length. Um, but yeah, very good book. Definitely check it out. Sweet. 